Hey guys, this is Heretic and it's January 23rd, 2021. And in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know to get started and playing in Solar Kingdoms, along with tips and tricks and things that I've learned along the way. Um, the, the progression of items, which should be very interesting to you if you've just started. Um, and there's a ton of information in this particular video. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So, for starters, don't assume that lunar progression, really lunar anything, is the same in Solar Kingdoms. They are very different, um, they are very fun, um, and you'll see as we, as we talk through this. To get started, one thing that is extremely frustrating to me that you need to be aware of before you join a Solar Kingdom is that they're released in threes. Um, so you have like Kingdom 1, 2, and 3 will be released one week, and then the next week will be uh, 4, 5, and 6. Um, I'm sure this is because, you know, once we're able to get to KVK, um, we'll be able to face each other in those threes at the very beginning. And this kind of somewhat even things out, but kind of not really, as you'll see. The problem with it is, um, if you join the first or the second of that three Kingdom um, release... Uh, you're immediately um, at a disadvantage because anyone else starting the game from scratch will go to the very newest kingdom, not to the first two in that pairing. In addition, after the first week, no one will able, be able to join you um, until really who knows when. The way that they have this built out is um, you go into this kind of gray um, state um, where no one can join those kingdoms if you didn't already have a character in those those three. Super, super, super frustrating there. Um, and even kingdoms that are about to have their first throne are inaccessible for players who are not already in that three kingdom pairing. So even if you want to join me in kingdom um, 10,010 or 110, um, you cannot, you, you can't, at least for now, and probably not until we have our first KVK. And then what would be the point at that, you know, at that time? Um, you know, everyone will be in their 40s, right? Or, you know, a lot will be. So the lesson here is if you're gonna, gonna go to solar at all, go ahead and coordinate with your friends ahead of time so that they can join you. Um, you know, you'll have, you know, possibly even if you just wait a few days after joining, it'll be too late and your friends won't be able to join you at all. All right, so for picking a kingdom, and this goes for lunar and for solar, I'm going to tell you what I do. When I join a kingdom, and I, and I join many, many, many kingdoms, um, I'll, most of the time I leave it at the very beginning, and, and this is why. I look at the leaderboards and I look at kingdom chat. Um, if I, in the leaderboards, if I see someone who's 40 the first day or 35 or something the first day, I just move along. Um, there's, they're going to be so far away, you know, in advance of everybody else that there's really no, no point for me. Um, and, and, you know, some of the spenders have learned this. So what they'll do, and, and not for me, because that's what most people would do, right? If you join a new kingdom the first day and someone has shot up, to 40, um, you know that either if if they're not your friend, then they're probably going to kill you, right? Um, so they've learned, a lot of them have learned to kind of go slow at the beginning so that, you know, you get people in the kingdom and playing and everything, and then you can start shooting up um, and it'll be too late for them because they won't want to quit. Um, so I, I move along if someone's 40 the first day. Um, if I see it completely, and, and I want to say this the right way, so everything that I say here is for King of Avalon. If I go into a kingdom and the kingdom chat is completely filled with Chinese players, if the leaderboards are completely filled with Chinese players, I move along. And I only do it because of experience. Um, even on the kingdom that I'm on right now, um, what we saw in chat was, you know, Basically, I hope you all die of the coronavirus. 
Um, you know, you're all white pigs. If you don't speak Chinese, then you're uncultured and you're garbage. Um, you know, I hope you all die in real life. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we were seeing in Kingdom Chat. Um, it works different ways, right? You see that in a lot of kingdoms. And it, it's not necessarily a Chinese thing. It could be anyone, right? If you go in and, you know, it's all Portuguese and they're all saying terrible things about people and they're all pretty high on the leaderboards, you kind of take that into, um, you know, into mind when you decide, you know, do I want to invest my time um, and energy to build a, an account? So I look at the KC and if the KC is relatively friendly, um, and funny, you know, and busy, then I'll stick around. If it's full of hate, um, and, you know, country specific, like if you're not from Yugoslavia or I don't even know that it's a country anymore, but <laughs> from Croatia, um, then I'm going to kill you. And I see, and they're, you know, 35 already. And it's full of people from one particular country who are being angry. Then I'll just move along. It's not really worth it. Um, in, in our kingdom, you know, we did see that. But at the same time, the leaderboards were a good mix, a good balance. So I think that in a way, um, it uh, motivated people to grow faster, to join together, to fight against that particular alliance, which is PRC, um, who we eventually kind of destroyed. And they've kind of broken up. And some of those same Chinese players, not the ones who said the real racist, horrible stuff, but some of the players that were in that alliance have actually joined me at this point. Um, so, I mean, it can it can work out. It just depends. You have to kind of take it into mind uh, before you invest your time and resources. Um, so the next thing, getting your hands on some relics. So gaining... Um, so, so one of the ones is the, the guardian relic, right? And that's, uh, you get from getting to level 40 dragon. Or I said that pretty bad, but getting your dragon to level 40. To do that is very difficult in solar kingdoms. You cannot even buy, um, dragon experience directly. You can buy it though. So the way that you get dragon experience, um, in, in solar kingdoms and everybody needs to know this it's so easy but it takes a while to figure it out you get it all through this thing called the uh, the vast majority you get it through this thing called the path of legend so you get it here from your boat you know this replaces the merlin trials it's there from the very beginning path of legend so basically you go through um through these little nodes and you have little battles. There's little dialogues in there that I skip. Um, for every one that you win, you get a reward um, with some pretty good dragon experience, especially when you get you know, later into it. Um, and, and they time them out. So right now, you know, I'm at 30, 131 here. I can't go further. It's coming soon. So what happens is each week, you have a couple more sections that open up. So say 20, 30 new um, battles. And, and so each one of these battles, like where I am right now, a win on a battle gives me um, 250,000 or so um, dragon experience. May not seem like a lot, but it is what it is. Um, the other thing is, and, and especially, so this journey for revenge um, doesn't give you any reputation, which I'll talk about. As you finish each one of these areas, um, you, you, each node will give you a little bit of reputation experience. And when you get to the end, you'll go up one um, reputation level. And so in each reputation level, the rewards are decent, you know, lots of dragon. It's all dragon um, based. So this is how you train your dragon. Right, so you get some pretty decent. This is just the, the rewards for reputation. So, this uh, journey for revenge, though, doesn't give you any reputation, but each one of these battles that you have have really good um, rewards for dragon experience. So, let me go back here. So, as you advance in the journey for Excalibur, 
book and in the Journey for Revenge book, um, I'm, well, I'm sorry, in the Journey for Excalibur, you get your reputation levels. Your reputation levels will set this automatic adventure rewards um, amount that you receive. So I get 1,527 every 10 minutes. So overnight, you know, I'll have over 50,000 um, adventure rewards. You claim those, and then you go to this adventure rewards store. It is all dragon based. And so you can buy um, your dragon XP this way. So this is how you grow. This is how you see people shoot up in dragon experience. Um, it's pretty good. Um, I, you know, that's that's how I've gotten where I am on Dragon Experience. I'm not the top one. I'm in second place, I believe, unless someone's passed me in the last uh, couple hours. See, see here. All right. So all of this is based off what I've gotten from the Dragon um, Experience that you get within here, and the same thing goes with the guy who's in first place. The only other way to get it and it's crazy, are these limited quests whenever they have a new item. If you go all the way to the very max, which means maxing out everything here, you get a really good reward. I don't know, but it's possible that the guy that's in first place has actually done that, um, but I'm, I'm not sure. So, so what I can recommend here for your dragon experience, which is critical no matter where you are in solar or in lunar, is to upgrade um, as items go out, um, you know, as much as you possibly can within reason, um, those upgrades will be needed. They're not wasted when a new item comes out. For example, um, your Death Seeker, um, it will, to, to upgrade past Death Seeker when the next one, Ice Lord, comes out, I'll need my Death Seeker um, items, even upgraded a little bit to be able to um, forge the new um, Ice Lord. Same goes for hero weapons, same goes for dragon emblems, same goes for gems. Um, I, I do recommend that you, you do upgrade as you go along and that'll allow you um, not only you know to keep up with, with product progression, but to also um, you know, get as much dragon experience as you possibly can from these uh, from these quests. All right, gaining lord experience. So, gaining lord experience is just like always. It's the same in solar, same in lunar. As you upgrade your buildings, you'll get a ton of lord experience. I get the vast majority of the lord experience that I have um, from uh, from just upgrading. I was the first to, to Lord 40, I'm way ahead of everybody else. I think I probably still am. I've got to be. Um, yeah, you can see here, 13 million ahead. And, and Grim is almost 35, same level as me. It's just the number of buildings that I've upgraded. Um, that, that'll be the, the big majority of the Lord experience that you get will get from just doing that. Uh, the other way is through just regular quests that you do. And I believe you get some off your Barbarians and Ravagers and, um, and other types of events as you go through. Um, the Cloak of Secrecy. Um, we actually had a guy in our alliance. He got it just from a normal Barbarian. Um, he got it about a week, a week and a half maybe, um, into the kingdom. You know, start of the kingdom. Um... So the, the next thing is, you know, how do you, how did I get up to level 35 um, so quickly? You know, if you're coming from from uh, Lunar and you say, well, three weeks and already 35, that's impossible. Uh, but if you actually look, like if you look up uh, Stronghold Requirements, um, King of Avalon online, you're going to see the Lunar Requirements. But for, but for a Solar... They're about 20% of the cost. And, and we don't have war, uh, werewolf gear or anything like that out right now. So there's nothing that's going to really, really help you um, other than small things from like heroes that help you, you know, knock off a little bit. Um, but th these requirements are super low in comparison to what you get, um, what you have to spend on... Um, 
lunar kingdoms. Um, even in the badges, it's less uh, as you go. I mean, this is for level 36, it's 950. So it's getting close to what you'd spend on noble badges in in um, in lunar, but not quite. Um, it's about 20% um, here. And this, these are full costs. Go against full costs and you'll see it's about 20% costs here. And it's, you know, it's relatively like nothing um, to get up to 35 as far as resources. The um, You get a ton of resources from doing all of the quests, especially the quests for a new character in a kingdom. Um, if you don't do those, you're kind of silly. Uh, you know, knock all of those out as quickly as you can. The quests that you have here, um, uh, kingdom quests, are really good too. Um, and I didn't mention, and, and actually your dragon experience, you can get off of here too, and it's it's okay. Um, but you get a lot of a lot of uh, resources, a lot of things that you need just from these regular kingdom quests. You need to knock those out as fast as you can. Um, they're easy. They cost nothing. Uh, same thing with your daily quests. Knock them out every day. It's really important to get you know just free resources as you go through. Uh, you know, if you do these every day, it'll help you a lot, especially at the very very beginning. Um, do all of the types of events that your alliance can do, like the portal, your um, fallen knights. Don't miss them. You know, as when the timer comes up, knock it out. Uh, the same thing for these Guardian Elder events when they're up. I think we have one starting maybe tomorrow. The Guardian's Challenge. The rewards that you get are important. Um, you know, overall, really important not to miss those. Uh, the Ravagers, same thing. Do those every day, plus the Master Ravagers when they're up. Um, and they come up, you know, they're up for a few days and then they're... You go back to barbs, and then a few days later, you have rav ravagers come back up for a little while. Um, eventually, that goes away. Um, beyond 30, um, also to get to 35, um, you should build farms just like you would on a lunar kingdom. Build farms and um, build up troops and have them gathering. Um, protect your resources protect your troops even on your farm so they don't get wiped out because you know at the beginning of the game it is crazy um, with killing and that's kind of what people like right the uh, you know the build up to Avalon all the wars and all the battles and all the fighting um, you know it is a war strategy game so all of that is is great um, but just like anywhere your farms are gonna be, um, a big source for resources. If you have a few farms going, you know, two or three farms going, um, it'll help you significantly to, to boost up to, to 30, at least, before you have to buy any nobles. You can do all of that for free, relatively fast if, you, if you're smart. Um, the other thing is, you know, when suggestion, a tip, uh, and it, some advice, if you are gonna spend it all, um, once you get to 30, um, once your stronghold hits 30, you'll have these um, limited opportunities to get nobles at a much cheaper um, price um, for a lot more. Plus, it comes with resources, too. If you can, get them. Don't, you know, that's, it's worth it in the long run. Um, I think you get like 900 nobles plus a ton of resources. So if you can do that, do that. Same thing goes with heroes, um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, beyond this, you know, what should you focus on those first 30 days? Um, number one, do all your quests. Do the Path of Legends. Um, any other game, events, and quests, the Witch's Cauldron which is here, I'm gonna show you. Uh, down here at the boat where the trials would be in Lunar. Click it, go to Witch's Cauldron. This comes up after about a week. Um, and these will, it, it, they come out the same time that you can actually get your Death Seeker um, equipment. Um, do these, it's absolutely free. Um, these build up um, over time. Um, I suggest max these out to nine all the way down 
and hit it and you'll actually and this is based off of the reputation reputation that you have in the um path of legend will allow you to get different sets of gear um as a you know super reward i've never gotten the death seeker one yet i did get some of the other ones i mean you can pick the the type of treasure that you can get from here uh, depending on your reputation level um you know do these it's just extra free stuff that you'll need as you go um the same thing goes for the kingdom bounty um these will give you you know hero and um hero weapon specific rewards um and the forest hunt will give you rewards um that are gem based all right, and these are easy. They just keep you going. Um, different things, you know, make, uh, build 60 troops type things. They're, they're easy or gather or whatever it is. It's all, it's all free. Gives you more um, uh, materials to use to build up specific things. Um, do all of that and you will be able to progress a lot faster. Um, the very first thing, like the most important thing you can do is actually do some research. So, hold on. Research is, is super critical and, and I'm not like the top researcher or anything like that. I mean, I'm just giving you good advice. The, the resources that you spend, the, the speed ups that you spend on research will never be lost. They'll never be um, replaced unlike other things. So, you know, even equipment, eventually that equipment will become easier to get. Researching will always be the same. Um, research uh, spending is, is good because it will never be replaced even in a year. The, the stuff that you did at the beginning of the first month um, will still count and still help you a lot. Um, yeah, especially, you know, you want to go for your March slots. Of course, that's part of the tutorial. And then later on, you know, go for your next uh, March slot and just keep training. I mean, you know, the, the normal stats, the infantry defense, the, the attacks, um, you know, all of that is, is really critical. Your infantry health and all of that. So keep going. Um, in, in addition, it's a little tips and tricks here. Um, you want to train up your um, wounded... Uh, here you go. your wounded conversion as high as you possibly can as you go through that'll help you whenever you do get attacked or you do attack someone to at least um, not completely lose your troops um, train speed and construction is also um, helpful as is a research speed to train at the beginning um, you know in the past I've I've kind of skipped on that and just gone straight to all of the combat stats and research, um, but these are just as important, if not more important at the beginning of the game as you kind of build up. So highly recommend that. Um, if you do um, spend a little bit, um, spend on research. Um, do, you know, next I would say your equipment and gems, um, hero weapons, um, they will be outdated but again, you'll need them to upgrade to the next level. All right. Um, in addition, the, like I said earlier, the path of, of legends, the strength, the stats that it's based on as you go through are based on the newest, latest item that has come out. Um, really, really important. Do not, under any circumstances, spend on Sir Gwen, on Uther, on um, the Red Knight or Igraine. These will all, these four will be replaced relatively soon um, after the kingdom starts within the first 30 days. The Red Knight and Igraine are the first to be replaced with uh, Boars and with um, Gorloris. All right, the next thing, find a good alliance. I know everybody, you know, we all want different things. You know, we have friends. We want all the social stuff going on. But if you're interested in surviving and growing quickly, the best thing you can do is join a powerful active alliance. The power that you see here, this alliance power means nothing. What matters is, you know, the stats of the players 
and um, the tier level that they're at. Um, that's going to protect you as you go along so that, you know, these guys that may be out just killing everybody who don't respect any of the kingdom rules that people set up. Um, if you have the stats, you know, if you're someone on your team at least has the stats to keep up with them, it'll, it'll save you a lot in the long run. That way you're not just completely farmed out from the very beginning of the game. Some of these others that you see here that are high up, um, you know, they are farmed on a daily basis by, by PRC and there's really nothing they can do. So their players are going to take a lot longer to build up. What you see on this power is either people in shields a lot or they've maxed out their total number of members and they have a lot of, of happy farmers. All right, in, in addition to that, um, a good alliance, an active alliance, a strong alliance will allow you to do the castles that come through the Path of Conquest, which give you a ton of, of speed ups for training. They'll allow you to do high level, um, the guardians, the dragons that you can do, um, which give you a lot of, of hero fragments, um, a lot of hero, um, yeah, a ton of hero fragments and XP and other awesome rewards. Um, you'll be able to do the portals, you'll be able to do the Fallen Knights and succeed and get a lot from that. Um, plus an active strong alliance, you'll constantly have barbarian ra um, rallies and you know things like that that'll just keep you interested in playing. I, I highly recommend it. it. Don't waste your time in an alliance that's just gonna be farmed every day especially at the beginning. If later on, you know, once what happens is um, at the beginning of, of a new kingdom, um, you know, everybody's trying to find their place and you'll have some people that come in with kind of the attitude like, I, I want to fight all the time. And they'll just go through and wipe out people as much as they can. And there's, and it's hard to deal with them. Later on, um, usually after the, maybe the first or second throne before KVK, <clears throat> things kind of uh, balance out and calm down a little bit. And at that point, the alliances that might not have the really strong fighters would be able to grow um, in a, you know, in a more peaceful environment for them outside of KE, raid, and those kind of events where they still might be under a lot of pressure. Um, I do have a video on... Um, defending and surviving, you know, night times. If you're in one of those alliances and any alliance that you're in, no matter who you are, you always have a chance of getting zeroed, but you have a lot higher chance if you're in a, in a weaker alliance. All right, now let's talk about the progression of items in a new kingdom. After about one week, you get your equipment, your first equipment, which will go up from um, rank one, which is Oathkeeper, then Courage, then Warmonger, and then Deathseeker is the top after one week. After 14 days, approximately, um, your new um, heroes will come out. You will get Goloris and Bors the Elder. They will replace Red Knight and Igraine. Do not, under any circumstances, let any of your friends spend any of their resources or, you know, the hero items that they get on Red Knight and Igraine. Break those fragments down, use them um, for other heroes. It's a complete waste to get them. Um, you will also get gems at two weeks. The gems go from Valor, Chivalry, Soul, and Chaos is the top that you can get now. Okay, that's after two weeks. So at the two week mark, you get new heroes and gems. At um, approximately 20 days in, you know, it's your second. So the, it starts off with a, um, a gold event, right? Then you have a break and then you have another gold event. At the end of the second gold event, you will have a three day kill event. Um, three days is a long time, <laughs> especially when not many people have any troops um, during this time. You know, so just like on Lunar, when there's a kill event, there's a lot of cry and be, you know, be ready for it. A lot of threats that, you know, the, the kingdom is going to die now. Um, 
a lot of people saying they're going to quit over losing a hundred thousand troops. You know, it's it's time to grow up or go play Farmville if you can't live a kill event without quitting. Um, you know, it gets much harder as you go along. Everybody should know that if you played the game any any amount of time. You know, you get into the millions of troops and you could easily lose all of those in you know one of the other events like KVK. Um, that and that the path of conquest gets us down to just a few um, level five castles and you know we're all kind of gunning for those because you get those amazing rewards there's wars and all kinds of stuff over that and that's kind of why they did the path of conquest at about three weeks as well you you get your um, hero weapons um, the hero weapons go up to and we'll take a look at them real quick because I don't remember they go up to wildfire, so the rank four um, weapons. Right, um, and we haven't got this, but it's coming up this next week. We'll have dragon emblems, and you can tell that from the very beginning by going up to your dragon and clicking emblems. So we have it in five days, so at approximately four weeks into the game, into the kingdom we'll have our dragon emblems um, and possibly and i know these are coming very soon we'll have lancelot and king arthur and what i've heard is they're kind of god mode they're kind of the katergan uh, matic combo that you have in lunar now which are the top um the top dogs when it comes to heroes and they're going to actually replace uther and sir Gwen, which is why i say don't put anything into uther and sir Gwen, which you can tell i have um, I regret it a lot now. Um, it's better, you know, if you're going to put anything into heroes to put them in Galoris and Borzi Elder, the chances that they'll be replaced anytime soon are a lot lower. All right, so that's what I've got. That's your first 30 days, you know, in a new kingdom. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of things like tips and tricks here is, uh, you know, save up. If you know that new heroes are coming, um, save up what you get. Um, another thing real quick, on the War Center, there's three things that you'll get the first at least three weeks into the game. You'll be able to get um, your um, Hero Summoning. Um, you'll, you'll be able to get your Construction Speed, and you'll be able to get your Training Speed. You won't be able to get Nobles. You won't be able to get anything else. No Dragon XP, nothing will come in these deals of the day and there are there's no other way to get dragon xp here there's no other opportunity to get it just so you know and on here there's nothing you know there's no dragon xp that you can get as you can tell here all right so that's what i've got that's your first 30 days um things to focus on tips and tricks for solar kingdoms um if you have any comments please leave them if there's anything that i've missed please let me know. Um, you know, tell your friends about the channel. Um, I hope to be doing a lot more videos. My goal is to be doing one video a day. It's something that I'm working on really hard to, to kind of build into my schedule. Um, I'll be doing videos both on solar and on lunar and the differences and more videos like this. Tell your friends about the channel. Um, hit subscribe hit like and leave some comments, you know, good or bad. I don't care. Let me know how I'm doing. All right. And with that, take care, everybody.